Hi, welcome everyone uh, uh, to the requirement consideration for the next generation of uh, ORV3 power supplies. Uh, I'm Harry Soin, Senior Technical Marketing Director from Advance Energy. Hi, my name is Gian Aydin. I'm the Senior Lead Engineer from Delta. And together we will be walking you through the new design which moves from three kilowatt to five and a half kilowatt. So, and Gihan will be, uh, Gihan, Jihan, will, uh, my apologies, Jihan, uh, will, will be addressing the first part, and I'll, uh, I'll go after it. So, okay, let's get started. So, at the first uh, slide, you can see the differences between the ORV3 existing and the HPR. I just wanted to give you a feeling about what we are talking. And we have an increase from 520 to 640. So it's increased by 23%. And the power increase is by 83. So this is just to give you a feeling. You see, I've highlighted uh, the extended chassis. This is what we gain. But the power is by 83%, just to get a feeling. So here I want to highlight the main differences between the HPR and the existing ORV3. And we have a power increase by 18 kilowatts to 33 kilowatts per shelf. And we have also on rack level, we are going from 36 to 99 kilowatts. So the second topic or the second uh, point is the transition method. For the existing one, we, are, we have a voltage droop by three volts so that the BBUs know that they need to take over and they kick in. And for the new one, we have now a dedicated signal which is going from the power shelf of the PSUs directly to the BBU shelf. And it's also redundant. The third topic is the pulse load requirement. This is adjusted to the latest load profiles of the GPUs. And our latest uh, point is the shelf output connector has also integrated temperature monitoring. So we are using it to protect the bus bars, to regulate the fans. So the last update of the HPR spec is the pulse load management mode. So most of the data centers, let's say, have a challenge to work with the existing upstream protection. And uh, once you have several racks in a data center and you have a pulse load, you can see that the input current excursion is not that small. And to minimize that, we have now a pulse load management mode where we activate the BBUs as well to share the load and decrease the input current excursion. And at the same time, we have also maximized the high voltage bus capacitance, like mentioned, and we are using this energy to decrease the input current excursion. Here we have a small overview of the existing uh, mass production units and also the roadmap for the 5,500. So we have a 1 OU shelf, a 3,000 3, watt module, a 2 OU shelf, some dummy loads for system testing, also a PMC, which is working with a, a Ethernet embedded Linux. And the next one we're aiming for is the 5,500. All right. Thank you, Jihan. Uh, moving forward, I'll be walking you through the details of uh, the, new, the new products that are coming, the new exciting products that are coming. It's the new power shelf and the new PSUs. As Jihan correctly pointed out, that you know, we are going from 3.3 kilowatt to 3.3 to 5.5. So essentially 83% increase in, in the PSU and with only 23% increase in the, 
the, the power supply uh, dimensions, right? So the key feature, the input voltage range pretty much stays the same, 180 to 305 is a pretty wide upper voltage range. Just the key features, uh, power is 5,500 watts per PSU. Uh, output voltage is still the narrow range. It stays around 40, uh, 50 volts, and it, you know, and there's a three volts, and it moves down. When the BBU comes into operation, it moves down to 48 volts, 51 to 48. Uh, output current is 90 amps, so around, you know, 100 amps current. And, and more importantly, this, the efficiency is same. The peak efficiency is 97 and a half, and... Uh, 96.5 over the full load, and there is a range in the specifications if you go into the detail. The current sharing part, you see further improvement. You know, as the current goes higher, uh, you know, we have introduced one volt of droop, so that helps with the current sharing as well. Uh, communication is I2C or I2C and a mod bus. And uh, the PSU size is 73 millimeters by 40 millimeters, so one OU high by 640 millimeters deep. and. Here is a power shelf. So power shelf outer dimensions are exactly the same, and this power shelf uses six PSUs, so five and a half times six gives you 33 kilowatts of total power, or, or you know, and plus one is five and a half kilowatt less. Uh, output voltage we just talked about. The connector changes, we had a bar clip 500 that moves to bar clip 600 connector, uh, and uh, communication remains the same as Ethernet via PMC. And you know the size of the shelf remains exactly what we had in the past. All right, uh, here is uh, the first snapshot of the efficiency of this power supply. Uh, as you can see, it's very preliminary. We just you know getting it on, getting it started, and these are the initial measurements you are seeing at uh, uh, at the peak efficiency is above 97 and a half, slightly above, but we are targeting that and. Uh, you know, and the profile over the uh, the load range from, you can see from 40% to the full load, it's uh, above 96 and a half, uh, you know, almost all the places. Uh, Jihan touched, uh, touched a little bit about the key features, and I think these are the key differences uh, as we move from uh, to, to the, to the 18 kilowatt power shelf to the 33 kilowatt power shelf. The real key feature here is the PSU to BBU transition. In the past, what you had is, you know, as the voltage drops, you go, to, you know, there's a, there was no signal, you drop straight three volts, or when the hold-up capacitor had depleted its energy by 50%. So there is a, a change for the, for the right to avoid uh, unnecessary tripping or the other features. And in this case, there are two criteria, and they are operated in an OR manner which is, you know, there is, an AC, there, is a cable, there is a cable connection of the AC loss signal between, between the PSU and the BBU module. And in addition, th there's a second, uh, which, is the, the, which should be that the, the capacitor energy should be, have enough hold up for two milliseconds. So it's an or condition. Either one of those conditions happens, uh, then the transition takes place uh, to the next stage. This is the, the, the graphical or the, or, the, or the view, so you see what happens initially as you're seeing in the first part, you know, your start of the AC outage, when the AC disappears, PSU is initially supplying with this hold up, uh, the initial energy, then the BBU triggers on uh, with, 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 with the AC loss or the, with the, either one of those criteria is met and then the PSU and the BBU are supplying the energy together and then the BBU uh, continues, so either AC comes back or, uh, uh, or the PSC will shut down when the, the whole energy is depleted. So that, that is another key difference. And more importantly, as Jihan pointed out, we have increased the power by 83%, right? There's a huge leap, and the people are wondering thermal implications and what are the temperatures and what happens to that. So here is a view of the flow term that, you know, even with this tremendous increase in power density, almost twofold, that the, the key temperatures, the thermal, our thermal simulation shows that all the temperatures are within the limits, and especially the magnetics and the semiconductors, uh, and uh, there is no violation. And you know, based on based on what you're seeing here right now, so that so I think that should be comforting to the thermal designers. So moving on towards the end, uh, th this is uh, A's uh, production units and prototypes. We have an ORV3 18 kilowatt power shelves three kilowatts, which is in production, five and a half is being worked. 
Uh, in addition, we have the 33 kilowatt high power shelf, uh, and we have a complementing uh, power management controller for, for control aspects as well. So this is the complete portfolio. With, uh, okay, I'm gonna put on my rag and power hat here. I think we have had a great contributions from everybody once Meta came up with uh, the, the specifications, right? When we have some really, really good discussion as uh, Stephen pointed out earlier, people have different flavors. You know, that was just a meta part of the spec. Now we want to talk about the surge requirements and all the other aspects. So we, bring, we, uh, we encourage everybody to come to these meetings and bring your ideas so we can help improve the spec or come up with the additional specs, right, so that we can address uh, the, the needs of the community as, uh, as we move forward and we create next generation of specifications and we move on to even higher power. So that brings us to the end of our presentations. And we are open to questions. Uh, <laughs> 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 well, that's, that's, well, that's 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 a good question. So, so essentially, that the, I think that's a very important question because if you look at the power supplies, you know, look at CRPS and the others. There are power densities to the tune of hundred. Uh, 100 watts per inch cube, right? And this here, we have gone from, let's say, roughly 33 to around 50. But the real challenge is, is the connection, the interconnect, the bar clip connector. You know, PSU by itself is okay, but you gotta take the bus bars. So imagine 100 amps per PSU, 600 amps per bus bar. So that's the challenge. And that's where I need to work with our friends like Amphenol, DCI, Harding, and all the others so that we can come up with a solution. So the real challenge is the interconnect. Was hard work. Yeah, and hard work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yes, please. You know, if if I recall correctly, the um, transient requirements for the supplies was like, was it um, one amp per microsecond? Or I don't recall. But m my bigger question is, it, it didn't seem like it was sufficient to prevent micro discharges to the BBU. Is that a concern? Do you want to take that? So are you saying that the BBU discharge, I mean, the, the reason the pulse specifications are in place, it's more to do with uh, the overclocking or GPUs Invent of GPU, so that is a criteria because you are now no, not only talking about 100% load, you're talking about 150% load. Yeah. So I think that's exactly what we are trying to address with this PSU. So okay, okay, yeah, I was just curious whether the actual um, transient behavior uh, of the GPUs is going to exceed what the requirement is in the V3 spec. So the pulse load requirement is just for the PSU without triggering the BBU transition. That's the first. Okay. Thing. Right. And one last question in the efficiency curve that you showed, what input voltage was that at? Uh, 277. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Hey, Harry. Hmm? Um, so you talked about the output connector going onto the bus bar. What about the input connector? because obviously that amperage would have to go that, That's well. again a good point. I mean, we are looking at, uh, you know, we have, have multiple meetings, and I, I think Stuart, I want to talk to you later on about that. There is a 160 amp drop or 260 amp drops, whether we use, uh, you know, Harding has an option and the others. We, uh, I think I'm going to put this question back to you, to, you know, how we address it together moving forward, because that's going to be a challenge. Yeah. And we look forward to doing that with you, uh, but especially also the cable assembly itself. Because exactly. the bend of the cable uh, the, is The really bend bad. radius and that. We can make a connector, but it's the cable that that's so, kind of limiting. So to, to piggyback on your question, you know, when you started off the first question, how did we do it? So these are the challenges yeah. that we need to address as a community together. Perfect, thank you. Anybody else? Power management controller required to maintain the highest level of performance, like, or is it just communication aggregation, or or do you need it for the connector temperature management? That's a very good question. Uh, the PMC is really not required for power operation. It's it's mainly for additional control 
or diagnostics and all the other things. But you know, we are looking on community to come up with standardizing that part because people are doing it differently as we speak, so there's no standard around that at this point. Please. Sorry, do you mind just repeating that on the mic? Just it's for the people that are being recorded for the video. Sure. I mean, there are two things: your output, a uh, fifty-one point five, and then BBU goes down right. to forty-eight. Forty-eight, yeah. Yeah, and in the last presentation, there was sure was talking about getting a fifty-four volt right. That's as Google a nominal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, what what? I mean, is there some consensus as to what that voltage should be as a nominal output? Uh, That's one thing, and then second thing is that. On the second stage, in the last presentation, we, sp we are still talking about 40 to 60 as input, mm -hmm. whereas your output's a narrow range. Do you think uh, that's also something that can be more like standardized, that everything is narrow range output? Well, that's what you're moving towards, really. I mean, 51 has its advantages because you can keep your semiconductors to 60 volt operation. And once you go to 54 volts, everything else goes to 80 volts and above, right? And the control becomes a difficult, difficult part. 54 is there to help the UPSs and the batteries. And so here, this specification has intentionally chosen 51 volts to have, you saw in the previous presentation, a fixed ratio, which brings it down by four, so on and so forth. So this is just an optimized version. But there, yes, there, there's a f we could have multiple designs, but this one is a narrow, it's a narrow range. I know I gave you a roundabout answer, but you know this design only addresses 51. Yeah, I mean, then why not have 51 as a standard kind of? Why are they thinking 54 volt as a nominal input, like in the last presentation, and then calling 40 to 60? I think we need everybody to come on board right. to, to address that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I think we're running exceeding our time limit. Or? Yeah, no, you're almost there. You got two minutes. So. Okay. Well, if there are no more questions, we'd like to thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you.